G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and this is a video tutorial on how to draw eyes. And uh, that might seem like a pretty simple sort of thing to do. In fact, uh, let's jump into a how you might assume to draw eyes video tutorial to begin with. So we have a head here and uh, with my pen I'm going to draw the shape of an eye. Sometimes people draw overly shapes, sometimes people draw more like football, American football shapes. Um, and then you have an eyebrow um, on the top of the eye like this. Then you have the middle bit of the eye. Oh, and that was a weird shape like that. And then inside the middle bit of the eye, there's a black area, the pupil. And that is how to draw an eye. Although it looks a bit odd. Uh, in fact, he looks like he's tripping on acid. So let's delete this. <laughs> And I'm going to uh, first take a look at some eyes and we're going to talk about how we can translate some of the information that we can see visually here. And this is just from a Google image search of eyes into our illustrations to make something that looks more convincing than what we <laughs> just drew. So of course, all of these eyes have different attributes and look different in their own ways, be it shape or color or details or anything like that. But I'm going to go through um, a bunch of these eyes and highlight some of the things that are pretty prevalent through most of the images that you'll see where eyes are present. And one of the first things that you'll notice pretty quickly with all of these are these little white sections that seem to be appearing in pretty much every single image of an eye that we have here. These are highlights. Because our eyes are really glossy on the surface, they reflect the environmental light around us. And often, especially when there are photographs being taken of people, there is a light source usually quite uh, in front of them or to their left or right and their eye is going to be catching that light and most of these eyes are catching highlights in their eyes. So that's the first thing I want to point out. The next thing I want to point out is in a lot of these images the eyelid is casting a shadow on the top of the eye. And on top of that, the eye actually has a gradient where there are areas of the eye that are a lot darker than uh, some of the white areas of the eye. So often it gets a bit darker in the corner here like that, but one of the most prominent areas of shadow that I tend to find and use in my illustrations of eyes is this top area just under the eyelid. Another thing of course to point out is eyelashes and we're going to get to this in a moment because there are ways to draw eyelashes that look terrible and I want to highlight a few ways of drawing eyelashes that are much more streamlined and look a lot prettier. But uh, the next thing I want to point out is eye shape and I'm going to select a different color here so it doesn't all meld together a bit too much. But you'll notice that there isn't actually any perfect oval or football shape eyes. In fact, they tend to hold more of an almond shape where there's a bit of a, a bigger end on one side and that tapers more sharply, uh, usually on the inside of the eye um, while it's still sort of unbalanced and the larger area of mass is sort of a little to one side of the eye and often that's the closer side towards the nose. So for example, here with this eye, we have this almond shape, which is a little bigger towards the left side of the eye, which is again closest to the nose. So in general, the shape of the eye is much more of an almond type shape. And the other thing to keep in mind about this is that shape changes. It's not constantly that same almond type shape, depending on whether they're looking up or looking down or even in a profile or side view. And of course, the eye itself can hold a different type of shape from one eye to another. So that's another thing to point out. And then the last thing I'll mention are of course the details. There are things like lids of the eyes or hoods of the eyes, um, some lines under the eyes or shading, eye shadow, things like that. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about the economy of our lines, because if you use too many lines, things start looking a bit weird. Uh, the characters start looking old or a bit decrepit or it's just an odd thing. So we need to really actually be careful how many lines we use and where we use them because every line is going to be a part of telling that story that we're trying to convey through our illustration. So jumping straight into our practical application, how can we apply this knowledge to this eye that I want to create on this character here? Well, first things first, I'm not going to jump straight into the ink. I actually like to rough things out in a construction pencil. And as you can see here with my uh, character's illustration, I began with a rough construction pencil and then I did my line work on top. So going back to my construction pencil, I'm going to create a bit of an almond shape 
for the eye and I'm gonna do the same for the other eye but of course because it's sort of off to the side it's gonna be a little more squished and that is gonna be my basic eye shape. Now another thing to notice about all of these eyes that uh, is sort of interesting to keep in mind when you're drawing eyes that we didn't really keep in mind with our example at the beginning are that the, um, the circle areas of the inside of the eye are often covered by part of the, the uh, lids or the under lids of the eyes. The under lids, that's the uh, technical term. So most of these eyes, except for of course ones which are wide and look quite shocked, usually have almost a, a quarter or a third of the, uh, the circle part of the eye covered by something. So normally the way I would draw an eye is to sort of have it a little bit like this, have the top of the eye sort of cover up the top of that circle. Now often the next thing I like to draw uh, in this stage of drawing the eye is the highlight and you'll notice that wherever there's a highlight it actually covers up whatever is underneath. So if there is a highlight even in between the, um, the pupil and the coloured area of the eye it covers both. So usually that's the next thing that I draw and uh, that is also going to be in the direction of where the light source is on the character. Now you would think also that the next thing past the highlight to draw is the pupil. And you, you would probably be correct, but when drawing the pupil, I actually, and this is my personal preference, don't just draw the pupil like that. Because it looks a bit odd. You'll notice that the eye looks quite dilated and still a little bit shocked or like they're tripping on some kind of drug. What I actually like to do is extend the pupil to attach up to this shadow area at the top. So I actually fill in a flat black, the same color of the pupil, to cover up a portion of the color area of the eye. And you'll see how almost immediately already it takes away that edge, that uh, <laughs> sort of um, drugged up look <laughs> on your character's eyes. And already that eye looks monumentally better than the first eye I drew. Next, of course, I can do something like the eyebrow. And personally, when I draw eyebrows, I don't like to draw some sort of a, a static or mundane shape. I like to have a little bit of edge to it. So I usually have a curve up and a curve down. Sometimes I add a bit of a point. I have it taper in at the end there and make sure that the shape is a little bit more dynamic and interesting. And the result is an eye that looks a little more aesthetically pleasing. Then of course, when we get to our inking, we're essentially just doing exactly what we did in a bit more a refined way. Now you'll notice that the shadow that I have that covers the inside part of the eye here doesn't extend into the white areas of the eye. And once again, that's because we're communicating with our lines. Because if I did that, for example, like this, all of a sudden the eye looks very heavy um, and it almost looks like they're trying to be eyelashes or something. But if we have that shadow area simply only in the color area of the circle of the eye, then we're communicating what we need to, which is that there is a shadow in the eye. Um, the highlight is obviously taking preference here and everything's sort of serving its purpose. Finish up with the eyebrows and then I'm done. So there you go, pretty quickly there are a few steps that I've used rather than just drawing the oval of the eye the eyeball, the pupil, and the eyebrow, and assuming it looks like an eye, if you keep in mind some of these aesthetic key points when drawing your eyes, you can make them look much more appealing. And we're gonna go through a bunch more stylistic examples that will hopefully serve to help you as additional points of reference uh, or resources that you can use when drawing eyes. The other thing I should have mentioned a little bit earlier is that this reference file, it's a Photoshop file, is available for you to download for free, so the link is in the description. And uh, of course, while I'm mentioning things like this, I created an ebook called Draw With Jazz A Fun With Faces. So if you're interested in really delving into more about the details of drawing eyes uh, in different styles, and of course, other areas of the face and expressions and all that stuff, make sure to check that out. So moving on to our first example, I have this character, this uh, little something I prepared earlier for you guys, uh, and he's in a bit of an angry state. His face is facing down and he's shouting. So the first thing I'm gonna do is get my construction pencil and um, just to explain what I'm using here, I have a tray of different brush tool presets and these are custom brushes that I've personally produced for my professional work and tutorials and all this stuff. 
stuff if you're interested I have them available for you to check out and buy on my shop so um, go to jazzestudios.com if you're interested in checking out the pens and pencils I'm using here now we're going to go through the process of drawing the eyes of this character in a very similar way to the one I just sort of demonstrated but there are going to be a few different changes here and the first is that the head is on a little bit more of a downwards angle. So what are the things that this downwards angle affects? Well, if you can imagine the eye as what it is, a spherical object in the inside of the skull and the eyebrows and eyelids are sort of overlaid on top of that, they wrap around the eye. So I'm gonna draw a, a spherical object here. And if you can imagine that with an eye facing straight on and we have our arm and shape covering maybe about that much of the visible eye, I'm gonna move this up here. If I draw another spherical shape, but this time with an angle downwards, we're going to have to translate how this angle will follow that eye. So the first angle up here is actually gonna be a bit more shallow, but the bottom one is gonna be a lot deeper and go down a lot more like that. And this helps sort of convey that there's a three-dimensional aspect to the eye that we're drawing. So we're actually gonna be applying a similar sort of idea here. So I'm gonna erase my spherical construction lines here because they're gonna make it look really weird, but I'm gonna apply that principle to this face and its construction drawing. Now, similarly, the eyebrow of an eye front on like this is gonna be much more um, high than it would be on a lower one because with the downwards angle, the things that are further forward are going to be appearing a little more on top of those things as the tilt comes forward. So an eyebrow at uh, a lower angle like this will also appear much more on top of the eye. But uh, let's say in this case, it's the same expression. It would look a little more like that. So applying these principles to our character here, I'll begin with the eyebrows because they're going to appear at the front because they pop out the most and we have a downwards angle. And then beyond that, I'm gonna be drawing the character's eye shape, which is going to be deeper at the bottom and more shallow at the top, followed by the rounds of the eyes, the highlights, and then of course the pupil and the shadow under the eyelid. The result of this is an eye that looks a little more three-dimensional and a little more dynamic because we have these layers. And as you can see, the foremost layer is the eyebrow because we have this downwards tilt and it pops out in front a little more than the eye itself because the, the eye is receded. And then beyond that, we have the details of the eye. Now, speaking of details of the eye, um, as I was saying earlier on, less is more, but if we add simple lines here and there, it really can say a lot and uh, we can use them in moderation to really change the story of what we've got here. And one thing that we can do in an expression of intensity is add a line under here that goes on this downwards angle and follows the edge of where the uh, bone is on the face uh, that sort of surrounds the eye. And they're sort of like bags under the eye. You cannot, of course, shade them in a little bit like this if the medium you're using, you know, might benefit from that. So that's something that you can do as well. But simply adding just those little lines there can add quite a lot to an expression or at least add a little bit more to that story in those eyes. So for my next example, I'm going to be drawing eyes on this lady here and they're gonna be a little more bubbly. So we're not quite gonna follow the exact proportions of a human eye. We're going to blow them up a bit. So where normally the eye might look a little bit like this, we're actually gonna stretch it out, maybe tilt it on an upwards angle up here in this corner and uh, have the eye a bit bigger than it might normally be. Beyond that, the actual circle area of the eye where the color and the pupil will be held are gonna be much larger and the eyebrow can go nice and high and be nice and sharp, have a little character there. Have nice big bubbles for the highlight of the eye, outline the shadow area and the pupil, and then the result is a nice big bubbly looking eye. But we can make this look more feminine. And of course, one of the ways that is uh, most effective to do this is to add nice eyelashes. What you don't want to do is this. I am drawing eyelashes and lashes there. 
You don't want to do that. Why don't you want to do that? Well, it looks like eyelashes, but they look kind of rough and not very pretty. And beyond the, the fact that it takes a bit of time to do and draw uh, each individual eyelash, it's stylistically a bit jarring and ugly. Uh, one of the most effective ways to draw eyelashes is to use silhouette and clump things together and create a shape of eyelashes. So for a cartoony character, you could actually draw like maybe three lashes out like this and shade this whole area in between the edge of the eye and our eyelash silhouette in a black and do the same thing for the other side here. And in filling that in already, our character here has more femininity and uh, the eyelashes look a little prettier. Now I'm gonna provide another example of both the eye shape and the eyelashes with another duplicate of our character base here. And in this example, I'm gonna demonstrate how we can really change the personality and character of our um, cartoon or illustration simply with the eyes. So we had a character here who looks much more friendly and approachable. Let's make someone a little more seductive and maybe with some ill intentions. How do we do that? One of the ways I like to do that is to had, have more of a seductive tilt to the eyes and half close the eyes. And when I say half close the eyes, if we draw the eyes nice and narrow like this, still keeping a bit of an almond shape, and we very lightly indicate the top eyelid being half closed like so, and then draw the eye peeking out with half of the circle covered, and then add our highlight, add our shadow and our pupil, do this for both eyes. That alone adds a little bit of a, a menacing look. That's just her eyes alone. Then we have the eyebrows. What we can do with the eyebrows is have a nice sharp point and uh, add a little bit more of a, an edge to the top and the corners of the eyebrows. Now the problem with this is it doesn't look very feminine because we've just got the very raw eye here. So the next thing you can do is draw some eyelashes that sort of curl out, have a nice aggressive sharp edge to them and even outline some of the bottom ones here. And do the same with the other eye, have a nice sharp curl out here. And then the last thing that I'll mention that you can actually do is shade in this upper eyelid. So with the upper eyelid shaded, it just looks like that they're uh, a little more seductive. They're obviously wearing makeup. Darker eyes also help uh, someone look a little more menacing. And of course, it's quite a feminine look as well. And the result is with both of these drawings, examples of two characters, one that looks bubbly and friendly and approachable and another that looks a little more menacing and cunning. So what about cartoons? We've covered uh, a little more comic book style eyes here, but how do we simplify it even further while keeping them uh, attractive and uh, having a little bit of personality. Well, I'm gonna take my cartoon character here. I'll make a couple of duplicates of him. And I'm gonna outline a couple of simplistic approaches that you can take when drawing cartoon characters' eyes. One of the most common ways that people think that you can do this is just with circles and dots and lines for eyebrows. And of course this can work and be effective, but it can also be pretty stale. So I'm gonna get rid of that because it's not that pretty. And I like to, with my cartoon character, still have a bit of shape with the eyes. So you'll notice that rather than just drawing circles, I'm uh, having a little bit of a, a point up here that's tapered. I have a nice round section of the front and uh, a little bit more of a, a shape here at the side as well. So it's not just a perfect circle. We're actually adding a little bit of character by having some aspects that taper in and areas that still hold a slight arm and shape. Now eyebrows can add a lot more character if we add a little interesting shape to them. So rather than just drawing lines, we can have nice big thick eyebrows like this with a little line at the edge to add some interest shade them in and then all of a sudden we have a character whose expressions are gonna stand out a lot more. Beyond that, the eyes themselves can work as dots, but they also tend to look a little bit shocked. What I like to personally do is draw a circle like so, draw a highlight and then shade everything except for that highlight. And then the result are some eyes that look nice and expressionable and dynamic. And you can actually adjust from those and use dots for very shocked expressions and such, but have something like this as a home base to get back to. Now you've probably seen loads of different examples of how people draw cartoony eyes. The version I just drew was a little bit more intricate. And if you wanted to go with something a bit more simplistic, you could quite simply uh, just draw that inside part with the highlight and then fill in 
the uh, the rest of it and then just draw your eyebrows and they could be various shapes there might be even more triangle like shapes and another way you might have seen eyes being drawn is with these odd looking vertical stretched eye shapes and they can work too and even really simple eyebrows like so uh, often less can be more with cartoons so with such simple shapes and lines we could use these to create interesting expressions but the point is you can see how with varying your styles and the amount of detail you put in your eyes you can drastically change how your character looks now the last thing I'm going to talk about is characters eyes on extreme angles and we've sort of covered this briefly in terms of having a three dimensional aspect and keeping in mind that the uh, tilt of the head affects also the, the depth of the angle on the hood of the eyes or how the eyebrow interacts and we're going to sort of demonstrate this in more extreme examples. So for example first my character here on the left has a very upwards tilt on his face. With an upwards angle on the face, the top of the eye is going to have a much steeper angle than the bottom, which is going to be much more shallow. And that goes for both eyes. The eyebrows are often further away or at least um, quite distant from covering the eye. And then the rest of the eye can be filled in in the same order that we sort of discussed previously. Now, whenever I draw a head on a very low angle, I always draw the eyebrows first, regardless of the expression. So if they're very happy or very angry, the eyebrows are almost always going to cover a part of the eyes. In fact, in this case in particular, the top eyelid is almost entirely covered by the eyebrow. From there, we can draw the rest of the eye. And in this case, he'll be looking off to the side like so. Fill in the shading or the highlights and then we're good to go. And now for my last example, we're going to draw an eye in profile or on its side. But before we jump to drawing it on the face, I want to talk a little bit about the particulars. In the so, we're going to begin with the eyeball and then imagine that we're viewing this on the side. So we have the eye uh, circles and highlights and all this stuff and we haven't uh, figured out where the eyelids and the eyebrow are going to go. Well, we've already established that in a front on view where this is the eye, the arm and shape sort of wraps around the eye like so, and the eyebrow sort of sits on top like that. Now what happens in a side on view? Well, as you can see, if we cut the eye in half, this front on eye, both sides of the eye taper to a point, but the middle is actually flat because the uh, front of the eye is open. From side to side, we close off here, but this is all flat. Therefore, the front of the eye is going to be open in this expression here, and then we're going to taper in to a point like so. So the eye shape in a side view or profile view looks a little bit like a triangle with a curvy front, often like that. And uh, depending on the angle of the head, sometimes it might be uh, uh, an eye that looks a little bit like this on a low angle or a little bit like this on a high angle. So uh, that angle can change, but the premise is basically the same. Beyond that, the eyebrow usually has some sort of a curve and curves often have two halves. So if your eyebrow has a curve on a side view, those two halves are going to be displayed a little bit differently. The, the half of the eyebrow closest to the end here is going to have a larger size, a larger amount of that curvature showing. And then the second half is actually going to be a lot shorter because it's at the front of the face and is sort of being squished away because we can't see much of it because of the characters being on their side. So when drawing a character on profile view, I often like to begin with the eyebrow. I'm not entirely sure why, it just feels a little more solid, like I'm building up something to follow. And then after that, I draw the eye. Following that uh, sort of triangly shape, drawing the eyes, highlight and pupil and shadow. And then as a result, we have an eye of a character on their side. So there you go, that's all I'm going to go through with you guys today. I hope this video has been useful to you. We've gone through a whole bunch of different stuff here today, um, but I hope that you've found something useful that you can apply to your cartoons, comics or illustrations. Now I know this video has been paced a little bit fast. I'm sorry if I, I speak a bit too fast or if my accent's hard to understand. Uh, if you want to go through this at your own pace, once again I recommend checking out my Fun With Faces book where it's all quite uh, evenly spaced apart and you can take your time as much as you need in uh, covering pretty much all of these aspects and more that uh, I've discussed today. So make sure to check that out. Otherwise, reference files from this tutorial, including images in the description for free. Thank you for watching and supporting my content. And until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel to see new content every week. 
check out more of my stuff by clicking the annotations over there. If you want to support my work and get a few goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, and get yourself something nice. If you're looking for a great place to collaborate, explore, or share your own content, head over to newgrounds.com. That's it for now, and until next time, see you later.